Dr. Kennedy Graham. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's been interesting to listen to uh, Nikki Wagner and Maggie Barry uh, in their analysis of the of the vote environment. And we, of course, we don't dispute the, the statistics. 40% um, or so on the environment itself and 60% or, or so on climate change, which works out, in the case of climate change, to something like $195 million. But uh, let us analyze that and ask ourselves, what is that money, that $195 million, spent on? The short answer is most of it has been spent on allocation of New Zealand units, which amounts to little more than generational theft generational theft. Mr. Speaker, the ETS, as it is currently fashioned by this government, amounts to a fiscal time bomb that will explode on the next generation and not us. And that is quite shameful. And that needs to be scrutinised with greater transparency and greater honesty, greater candour and respond with greater creativity from this government to get this right. The deforestation that we are anticipating in the next five to ten years is phenomenal. We have got through the first commitment period of Kyoto by the skin of our teeth, not because we brought down gross emissions, they went up, but by the fact that our forestry went up through plantings 15 years ago, early 90s, mid 90s, for tax policy reasons totally unrelated to climate change. And then we have completely messed up our climate change policy in the last five years, such that we are facing a massive amount of deforestation over the next 10 years. Zero money under the estimates for the permanent PFSI, Permanent Forest Sink Initiative. $171 million to allocation of units to polluters. Mr. Speaker, let me ask the minister sitting in the chair a number of questions about our ETS policy. Just picking up on the question that my colleague Uzeni Shage asked, asked him earlier about how he'll enjoy swimming with his children through fecally contaminated rivers. My questions pertaining to climate change are the following. With regard to the UN target, if the government can remember back that far, 2007 IPCC, fourth assessment report, the prescription for Annex 1 countries to keep within the two degrees and bring our global emissions, play our share in the global emissions, reducing from 49 to 44 gigatons, is a reduction off 1990 from gross to net of 25 to 40 percent. This government, in the form of Treasury and Cabinet papers, say it does not follow that New Zealand has to be within that range. Question number one to the Minister. Which countries does he wish to nominate from the Annex 1 countries to make up the shortfall when we are not doing our share? Second question. The government has, in its ineffable wisdom, turned away from the second Kyoto commitment period because that's a legally binding obligation. It says it will, quote, elect to take its commitment under the Framework Convention. Why? Well, especially because it cannot afford a legal obligation because of the wall of wood coming down the track. But particularly because it insists on looking forward and alluding to the 87% of emissions that are coming out of the developing countries. This government is obliged, like the other Annex 1 Kyoto countries, to acknowledge the 77% of historical responsibility acknowledge the continuing relevance of the CBDR, the Common But Differentiated Responsibilities, acknowledge the difference that still obtains in per capita emissions, and acknowledge that it has a responsibility to be in Kyoto too. That's the second question. Third question, the government in the form of Treasury still bases its policy on the notion of global least cost. Does the Minister wish to acknowledge that there is no such thing as a global price or a global market on the carbon economy yet, and won't be for at least probably 10 years? There is a chaotic regional market coming out of Europe, through which, incidentally, from which Australia and the European Union protect themselves, but not this country. In its overzealous approach to an open global economy based on neoliberal principles, 
it allows itself vulnerability to that. The question is that vote environment stand part of the schedules. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The question now is that vote primary industries stand part of the schedule. Richard Prosser. Thank you, Mr Chairman. <clears throat> I'm pleased to rise on behalf of New Zealand.